Hotel family. Hotel. My name is uh, Jumo Rafiki. I'm from uh, born and raised in Dayton, Ohio. Uh, it seems like everything that um, in my life has led me up to this moment. Being born and raised in, uh, in Dayton, Ohio, um, I had the chance to attend, well, you know, live in an all-black neighborhood, and my the, my high school was named after the first black poet laureate in all of the United States by the name of Paul Arms Dunbar. Paul Arms Dunbar was also friends with the Wright brothers, uh, the two brothers who invented the airplane. Um, my mother and father were from Dayton, but my mother was um, born in the city of Ripley, Ohio, which was one of the small towns, which was a jumping off point of the Underground Railroad as slaves from the South. Made they uh, made their way to Canada. <clears throat> so, in uh, during the Vietnam War, after high school in 1972, I joined the United States Air Force and got stationed during the war in Southeast Asia. It was over there that I realized that something wasn't quite. You know, I felt different being in that tropical climate, and um, of course, racism was quite prevalent over there. We did a. Um, we not only had battles with the Viet Cong, but we had battles with the white boys that were over there too. And during that period in the 19, early 1970s, um, it was still the Black Conscious Movement was going on. So what you do today with this fist bump, um, that origin came from Black people in America. It's actually called DAP and it was uh, named after a black Vietnam soldier who was killed in Vietnam. And this is what brothers did over there. So when you see white people doing this, it's fist bumping and everything, they don't know what they're doing. That belongs totally to you. Um, fast forward to coming to California, that played another a very important part of my life because that's where I ran into the epicenter of the black cultural movement in Los Angeles in the Lemur Park area where I started reading all the books and everything about my history. Then, that's also where I found out about LIB Radio and Kiti Obiawadu, and from his website, I found Bomani. As soon as I got my, 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 uh, myself um, some, some, uh, some money on my hands, I made it to Atlanta to put the money in his hand in person. <laughs> Yeah. I wouldn't send it. You know what I mean? I really wanted to go that bad because many of my relatives had immigrated down to the Atlanta area, but I wanted to meet Bomani, you know what I'm saying? Because I have met uh, so many. I had met um, Renoko Rashidi. I had met Kiti. I had met Ajwa Kwesi. I had met Amala Karanga. And I had the chance to sit down with some of the most powerful living ancestors today. And I feel really grateful for that. So when I found out that Kitty was coming to Ghana, well then, you know, I, I, like God or whatever you want to call it, what have it, I found some more money. And um, I kept driving that 1998 Toyota Corolla, even though I made good money working for the government. And I said nothing was going to be more important than coming here, like getting a girlfriend, new clothes, new shoes. I put all of that on hold. So, you know, um, I said, damn, you know, coming here was, um, as advertised, the, the trip of a lifetime, and I'm just really, really so grateful to be here, and and um, I'm not going to say I'm, I might be coming back. I know I'm coming back. Thank you.